Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 8 of Project Ultron, the aim of which is to build a life-size Ultron torso resembling Ultron from the movie, which is actually a real robot because Ultron is in a costume. And that's partially going to be driven by motion capture and also by its own AI. So have a look at the first few project videos in this series to see some R&D that I've done and working on the motion capture suit and some other bits of testing. So this is as far as I've got with Ultron so far. We've built basically the lower torso with some actuators in, and we'll have a closer look in a moment. And I also last time worked on some of the cosmetic pieces. So this is gonna be highly detailed. It's 3D printed, partly in ABS, rigid plastic, and also in Ninja Flex, which is a rubber-like material, so I can have all sorts of biologically inspired flexible pieces. Now, up to now, I've pretty much built something in every video. And as I say, last time I did some of the cosmetics, but I need to be really careful going forward that I don't just build little bits as I go and then find out they don't work out in the end. So this episode is gonna be a lot about planning. I'm gonna do quite a lot of CAD to scale out the torso to make sure the mechanics fit when I come to that. And also the torso's in scale with what I've done already. So I'm actually gonna be doing some CAD tutorials in this and showing you roughly how I did these parts. And I'm using Autodesk 123D Design, which is free software. I have looked at some other software, including Fusion 360, FreeCAD, Blender, and lots of other things, but I haven't got quite got my head around those yet. So I'm gonna carry on with what I know. It is free, it's quite good for beginners in CAD. I'm gonna show you some basic techniques that I'm using to model the parts. After that, we're gonna look at some more mechanisms that I'm gonna use, particularly for the shoulder mechanisms, which are really important, that I get the right leverage angles and torque. And I'm gonna, as I say, use flexible parts in those, and also wanna be quite clever with the mechanisms so I don't end up with lots and lots of motors, and that makes the control a lot simpler, especially when I'm driving it from motion capture, which has fairly limited joints. So let's have a closer look and see what we've got so far. As I said, we did quite a lot of cosmetics last time and most of the front parts here 3D printed in rigid ABS. This piece isn't fixed on yet for reasons. Um, and the rest of this is actually uh, silver ABS. Now, um, I've actually got two Ninja Flex blocks here, which are 3D printed in a rubber light material. And those are so these pieces can flex all around. And the reason for that is that I've actually got these linear actuators hidden behind them. If we just remove those, you can probably see that we've got a couple of screw threads and we've got some big pistons that sort of drive up and down and those are driven by electric motors hidden just behind the cod plate here behind. And that allows the top plate to tilt and also move up and down. So have a look at um, the video last time to have a look at that um, where I demonstrated with this top plate and these are also coupled to the top plate with again Ninja Flex blocks and again at the bottom. Now the spine that we've got here is also built out of Ninja Flex blocks. So all of these sections are quite flexible and they're actually segmented and I've got rigid ABS pieces in between and those are actually held down at the moment. They need to be tied down with a tensioner. But I've got some more Ninja Flex filament just threaded through holes to hold that down. I've also got a pivot point here which allows this top plate to move either way as these actuators change length. So that's gonna give me flexibility up and down and side to side, but I need to be quite careful, in fact, that uh, the rest of the torso can move around that. So I think it's going to be okay. The obvious exception is this piece, but it is in a recess here. So as this top plate twists, that should still be wide enough uh, for this, but I haven't fixed it on yet. It's probably going to hinge backwards and forwards a little bit as well. And I've got um, a hole just here to do that. So we'll be fitting that on at a later stage. There are some bits in the upper torso that kind of come in between here and obviously quite close on the outside. So I need to be quite careful with those. So that's what we've got mechanically so far, but let's look at the process of building up the rest of the torso and scaling out. So this is what we've got already. And basically I've put those cosmetic parts into the same CAD drawing as the other bits and the spine that we did before. And I've merged some of these into large solid chunks, uh, which kind of makes memory handling easier. And 1, 2, 3D will go a bit quicker if there's not lots and lots of parts. And it's really easy to merge parts. All you need to do is take the merge menu here and select two parts, and then they'll suddenly become one part, which works really well. 
All right, so let's see. Um, I've decided to start fleshing out the, the main proportions here. So um, I've got these parts here, which I've just drawn in to try and work out roughly how big the torso is going to be. And these are some fairly simple shapes that I've just positioned. Of course, these are the scoops that go under the arms. And then we've got the sort of start of the chest plate there. And there are two pieces that poke down in between the front sections so I need to be quite careful that's aligned okay and they probably need to be flexible in the future so that the whole torso can move around and it's pretty easy to draw these shapes so if we just take a new primitive from the primitives menu so a cylinder in this case I'm just going to stick it on the zero point and make it a size by typing in the numbers so um, we can then make that into a curved piece by chopping the middle out so we can draw a sketch on the face just like this and then we've got two choices one of those is to extrude that through and when you click on that sketch you get a little menu you can select extrude and just pull that through and press enter then you can delete the sketch and that gives you a ring if I just undo that with Control Z the other way is to use the split options here and use the modify menu and split solid by selecting the solid then moving this little toggle over to Entity and using the sketch to split it, then pressing Enter. Again, if we delete the sketch, that gives us two pieces, and we can select and delete the middle one. Then it's just a case of cutting that in half. So I can again draw a sketch on the ground plane, and again use the split solid tool to cut that. And that gives me two halves, I can delete one or whatever I want to do. And from there we can just scale this out, so there's a scale tool if I select that solid and go down to the bottom. And if I select non-uniform from that menu, then I can stretch it in any direction and I can just type those numbers in down the bottom here as well. Then I've just positioned that in, so if I select the item, I either get a drop down at the bottom that says move, or I tend to use the one at the top on the transform menu, and that allows me to rotate this all around using these points, and then I can position that wherever it is I need to in the rest of the drawing. So from this stage, I've moved on and started to flesh out some of those shapes. So I'm starting to build up the chest shape here and also contouring these scoops here. So they're thinner right under the arms and they come up wider, of course, at the front. I've still got these pieces at the front here, which I've changed the angle of slightly and they need some further work doing on them. At the moment, these are all separate parts that just overlap. So I'm just basically fleshing out the proportions. I've looked at quite a lot of reference photos as I've gone to try and do that. So all I did to contour those shapes was took my arc again and basically drew a sketch on a pivot point. So what we need to do is split that face so we get two separate faces with the split face tool by selecting the face and using that sketch to split it. At that point we can delete the sketch and then we're going to use the revolve tool which is on the construct menu to select that profile and use the join in the faces as the axis and then we can actually bring this out how we want to. Um, if we want to make this piece a bit smoother, also we can select on that edge, and then we get some options including the fillet, and we can just stretch that out to make it curved, or whatever shape, until it's completely flat. So we'll give that a slight curve. Um, also cut some contours in there. So um, generally you'd cut things with a sketch, although if I draw, try and draw a sketch now, onto this it won't let me because I can't draw on a curved face. So there is a way around that which is to get another primitive like a box, let's just make it quite thin, and then use the snap tool which is this little um, sort of magnet icon to snap that onto a face and then I can use that to draw on. The other option is that I can just position it manually roughly where I want it by turning it round Let's just turn that 45 degrees and move it over here, maybe a bit more, and kind of move that close to where we want it. Then I can draw onto that using the sketch tool. So I'm just going to draw a curvy line. Now I've got that plane to draw on, a bit like this, however I want it. And then I can use that sketch to cut the other item. So if I now go and do split solid, I can then cut that item with the split and delete that, delete the sketch and delete my temporary primitive 
and that gives me a contour so I can contour any of these parts in any of the axis. Similarly, I made these parts by getting a primitive, just a block, and cutting them, and I've cut them, uh, just put dr drawn sketches on, really, and cut these contours on, and later on I'll go to cut the other faces as well to curve that backwards. So yet more scaling and fleshing out, I've actually stretched these out with the scale tool that I showed you before to make them slightly wider, um, those contours I cut in before. So um, I think this is building up to be the right sort of shape, hopefully it's the right proportions for the bottom half. Um, so these parts again you can see I've cut out some scoops in there which I did in exactly the same way by getting a, a flat primitive and then using that to cut it. So I've also cut the sort of chest plates here by drawing on this face and cutting it to give this contour twice and then scaling it and you'll see that I've got again these um, edge things here so if I select any of these edges I get this little tool and I can just go and um, bring that in and put a chamfer or fillet on there so I've just done that to these faces um, these parts were here before but actually all I did was again cut them from these parts and then actually scale those up so they're slightly bigger and then I've just positioned those around so that I can put them wherever I want to to try and make them look right and obviously these are all separate parts I haven't merged anything together so I can come back and adjust those but I'm pretty happy with the way it looks um, I really need to try and position some more of the upper parts I think and the back to try and work out if this is the right height it's looking pretty chunky at the moment um, and quite thin in the waist so there's still hips to go on and some extra bits of uh, stuff that I've previously described as conduit that rise up from the sides I decided I should do some work on the back of this because there's not much on the back and I've done quite a lot on the front so um, I decided to put these bits on which sort of run up the back towards the um, shoulder blades and they're sort of they look like kind of weird twisted shapes um, which you can't really cut from a solid block because as you can see this um, face for instance twists as it goes up so the way to do that really is with the loft tool so I messed around with a load of sketches which you can see floating off to the left and um, all you have to do is position those, I can draw them on the ground plane then obviously I can get one and I can go and move it around with the move tool however I want to um, and then we need to select all of them so let's just get that one and I do that by holding the uh, control or shift key and just selecting them all and then if we go up to uh, the menu here and select the loft tool from the construct menu it should turn them into one solid shape so that gives me um, the basic twist and the basic shape for those parts and then of course I can go and select the edges and in this case I've just done a chamfer on a couple of them so let's just get those chamfer those off and I can remove this from the sketches so that gives me that part and again I can scale that and do whatever I need to do and I've just stretched that a bit out and position those in here now I don't need to do two of these because of the mirror tool so if I delete the one on this side and in fact I've only ever drawn half of this and then used the mirror tool to make the other one perfectly symmetrical so all you need to do is select the object select mirror from the pattern menu and then select a mirror plane and I've got a little sketch floating right down in the bottom here which is right in the middle and if I click on that that makes the other one appear so I'll just show you that again without it zoomed in there we go and I can do that to any of the parts and that makes everything symmetrical and you can do that in any plane um, left to right back to front etc as long as you've drawn a sketch line and that's been there since the beginning of this project to make sure everything works out symmetrically so that's starting to build up the back just thought I'd have a tea break and go back with fresh eyes to have another look it's actually been a couple of days doing this and just thinking about it I carried some of the images around on my phone and had a look at it in my spare time here and there just trying to get an idea for the sort of planning process and whether it all looks okay I'm a bit concerned that the hips look a bit thin and the top's getting quite wide so I probably need to flesh out those parts and you know that's all part of the process of adjusting it and going on as I go so I decided to flesh out the waist a little bit here to make sure that I'm getting things in proportion correctly so I just drew these blocks which are currently green 
um, and immediately it looks much better. Um, there are some extra side pieces that come up on the inside of those green pieces and the inside of the scoops under the arm, uh, which kind of cover this red part, um, which are missing. So the torso at the bottom is going to be slightly wider, but those are going to be flexible and they need a bit more planning. So I've also um, put these parts in, which are sort of the leg hinges, although it's not going to have legs. I'm at least putting those in as a placeholder so I can scale it. And now we can kind of see the arch of the middle of the back there, um, remembering that this part is also going to be um, clad with some extra panels. At the moment it's just red and it needs to have the silver panels putting on. So that's going to be slightly bulkier, um, but I think that I'm starting to get that sort of body shape that we need. So a bit happier now that the top was right, and I did quite carefully look at pictures before doing it, but I think this is really helping with the scale. So starting to cut those hips up, obviously just chamfering off the edges there. I've also, um, of course, cut contours on this plane before doing so to get those edges. And also from the bottom, I've cut a curve in on the, uh, the face here. So just drawing a sort of curved sketch and cutting the inside and the outside and then repeated scaling and messing around to try and get those pieces in the right shape. On this side I've started to make um, another little extra piece that's stuck on here, so if I just hide this for now you can see we've got this extra thing which is a bit like a mud guard that kind of goes over the hips. And the way I did that was just to effectively copy and paste this part, so you can use Control c and Control v and that will give you a duplicate of the item. And then again drawing sketches on that face and cutting pieces out I've made this separate piece so that is literally just a chunk of that and then I've obviously chamfered off that edge so that has uh, sort of made that extra feature and then of course I can merge that in again using the merge to make this all one solid piece so that starts to contour out that hip shape. From there I've just done some further contouring and if I just hide this part again for now you can see I've just chamfered off the surface in there so that I get a kind of thinner piece that sticks over the main hub there and you'll see I've done some work on these. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to print those. I think actually because it's only a torso they're actually not required but um, it helps me flesh out the sort of scale of this and this again is just a primitive that's been cut up and then the um, edges have been chamfered in between the cuts and it's been merged back together and to do the pattern on here is actually pretty easy as well. So if we take a cylinder so let's just take this one and make it whatever size you want and take another primitive, in this case we're going to take a box let's just make that um, a similar size I'm just going to use the snap tool to stick that right onto the edge now I can produce um, a pattern all the way around this using this instead of having to position it lots of times so if I select this and use the pattern menu to take the circular pattern um, I've already selected the solid and the axis is going to be the axis of this and that gives me the option there to decide how many I want so let's just say I'll have 20 a few more so they overlap a bit perhaps like that and then we can easily make that pattern and of course if I do anything to that piece before I um, make the pattern I can chamfer those edges off for instance a bit less there we go and we can do that again There we go, and um, pretty much do what we want, and then we can continue to work on this, and again, put a chamfer on there. And obviously the outer ring is just another ring like the first one I cut, and that gives us this whole thing. And then of course I've merged all of it back together to kind of give me these patterned hubs. So pretty happy with how that looks so far. Of course I can still shift some of these pieces around if I need to, change the angles. There's obviously a lot more pieces to go, um, some in between these around the bottom of the spine, some more bits on the back and so on. Um, but I need to be quite careful that the arm mechanism is going to fit in here and it's possible that some of these pieces will actually need to be flexible in order that the arm can move backwards and forwards. So um, what I've actually done is gone ahead and fleshed out with some really crude primitives basically the rest of the um, the top here and roughly where the head is 
and that's really helped me get a sense of whether this is the right scale and I've also roughly worked out where the arm joints go which is something we need to discuss in more depth um, but that's approximately where they fit so looking from a profile point of view they look fine back to front they're sort of in line with where the hips are and try to posture the head there at the back I've put some extra bits on the shoulder blades there's still some more to go that sort of ties these parts up and I've repositioned some of these making sure there is space for the spine which exists in the upper torso and making sure these aren't too close to the shoulder hubs so of course the head and the neck and everything is going to be an, another quite detailed mechanism made of flexible parts a bit like the spine stacked up so it can flex all around and um, the shoulders here again are going to be, be able to flex up and down and they probably need to be made in more, more than one part um, obviously the arm is attached sort of to the outside of this part um, but there's also a big shoulder bell that goes on between that and this part over the top of both of them and again that will need to flex when the arms lift out so um, pretty happy of how this is looking from a whole scale point of view and I can return to detail these parts up later but for now we really need to think about those arm and shoulder mechanisms taking into account the research I did in the early episodes if you've been watching the series since the start, you'll remember that in episode 3 I built a little test arm which I controlled from one of the motion capture sensors which I'd built in the previous episodes. It's really worth having a look back in those early episodes, starting with one, if you haven't been following the project, to see why I'm taking this design approach. So I did something slightly unusual with the arm, um, and this is my test arm, so instead of having a human-like shoulder, in fact what we've got is this rotating element, that rotates the shoulder then attached to that we've got the ability to lift outwards and attached to that the ability to twist um, and this worked quite well to take the Euler angle straight out of the motion capture sensors and build this mechanical arm that inherently uses the same angles in the same fashion rather than having to translate them that's the main reason for doing this and if you want a demo of that as I say it's in part three now in part four I built another little test arm which is this one and this was to test series elastic actuators. So we've got a screw thread that actuates this main axis, but attached to that is a sliding element with something elastic, and I can measure that amount of distance. So effectively I can measure the amount of force being applied to this by measuring how much this sliding thing, which is in series mechanically with the main actuator, I can measure how much it moves, and therefore I can back drive the arm and make it move around by pushing it. So I need to include something like that into all of the joints. I left these scoops out of this plate here on each side and that's to allow um, a big rotational tower to fit in there. There are mounting holes to fit it on. Then on top of those two rotational towers, much higher up, they'll both be linked together with what the head mounts on. So this was kind of forward planning, although I didn't know exactly where I was going to put the mechanism. I know that it roughly fits each side here roughly at the back as per the CAD that I've just drawn and I need space in case I need to bring that down so I can get the series elastic actuator and some geared motor stuff all built into this. There's also going to be some other levers as I'll demonstrate now. So I've built this uh, little test mechanism out of Lego to work out some of the leverage angles now I was going to build um, rotational hubs with motors and rotary gears inside but I decided it is easier for the arm lifting mechanism at least to use a linear actuator and some levers and remember that I actually want the whole shoulder to float so um, what I've got here is basically this is a linear actuator this poking down here is the arm and this is effectively its sho uh, floating shoulder so as I push this lever up of course the arm lifts up till it's right out but also the whole shoulder lifts so if you can imagine those other bits of shoulder being attached above and below it as it lifts the whole thing shifts up just like a human shoulder so this is the clavicle which is basically your um, collarbone so there and that's attached on another lever I haven't drawn that part in CAD yet but that will also lift up and it's located just in between the chest and obviously in between that and the actual shoulders so that's located further forward at the front now um, for now this stick here represents a round shoulder hub that lifts outwards so that will rotate but it also lifts on this lever as it does so pushing up the shoulder bell pushing up those shoulder pieces and then essentially my rotational tower is about this axis so this rotates forward and backwards to move the arm just like that little test arm I showed you obviously when the arm is out it can move forwards and backwards 
and that will then inherently use the Euler angle straight out of the motion capture sensors and again have a look at that part 3 for a further explanation on that so now I need to try and draw this in CAD but try and put the hubs in that around there's also a ring that kind of goes around this um, which needs to be attached to this plate so that whole thing will lift up as the shoulder lifts I've started to flesh out some of that mechanism so um, I've got this uh, big ring here which um, was sort of represented by part of the brown piece in the main torso assembly and that's going to be one of the main pivot points in this assembly as well as this lever here which needs um, some holes in the other end and I'm not sure how long it is till I put that back in the torso um, so the two hinges you can see on the main arm hub here the top and the bottom are the main points that were in my lego mechanism and of course the top one then comes back through the hole that we can see in this piece here so i need to work out what that leverage is and where the bottom of that is going to couple at the moment the plan is that it couples to the rotation tower we'll have to put this back in the torso to see exactly where that vertical rotation point is and you'll see that the arm hub here is divided into various sections the middle is actually all one section it's just patterned but the red parts on the outside are independent pieces the plan is to build a series elastic actuator into this hub rather than on the linear actuator that pushes the whole arm up and down so I can get force feedback so there would probably be some sort of pot in the middle of the blue and then some flexible sort of couplings with bolts that run through through ninja flex bushings so that there's some flex between the red and the blue and it can sense how much force is being pushed back on it by how much rotation there is between the red and the blue sections. I'm filming the screen here so I can wave my Lego in front of it but basically what we've got here is the uh, mechanism placed back into the torso and I've placed the um, shoulder joint there so it's in the equivalent position to the other side. So um, let's just relate this to the Lego. So the pivot points at the top and the bottom of this main shoulder hub of course are these parts here. The main part here which um, travels across is of course this piece which brings the whole shoulder up and the top point of this pivot point on the main shoulder goes down through the hole in that sort of horizontal piece and that of course is this long thing that gives it the leverage to actually lift and then my clavicle which is this piece is going to probably be actually attached to the top of this ring um, and it will sit just in front here so it sits in this sort of region and go down to the front of the neck. So um, everything is a bit more compressed, this is much wider than the proportions of the actual thing and of course this um, main horizontal piece as you can see actually comes more than the middle so that needs to be um, shortened but I still need to make sure that that lever can travel all the way down which means it's probably going to have to be slightly curved but this is the thought currently for um, how this relates into the real robot. It may be also that I move everything forwards very slightly here. I haven't quite decided where yet. I thought it was in the right place to start with, but now I'm not so sure. Now I've got this big ring on it. So um, for now, we're going to leave it there. Um, the other thing about the rotation, if I just get rid of these again, is that um, having it rotate around the middle point, right in the middle, is um, going to be a bit weird. So um, obviously, it's going to crash into the back here. And it may be these... Um, sort of shoulder blade pieces are actually flexible and those are coupled to it so they move or hinge backwards and forwards as the um, as the shoulder moves and they won't really move on that sort of pivot but they probably will flex slightly so it's kind of feels a bit more biological and it feels like your actual shoulder blade moves as the arm does which of course what happens in a human um, but for now I think that actually the pivot point for this is probably going to be around the larger blue ring there so I think it's probably going to be something more like a pivot point there which is roughly in the middle which um, does give it more space to move of course the large horizontal blue part is shorter so that won't crash into anything and I think that's going to give it a much more sort of natural motion and I can use again the top and the bottom of this blue ring as the pivot points so um, if that takes the shoulder blade with it then I think that that's actually going to give me a lot of space and movement and quite a lot of flexibility but I need to work on some more of this mechanism do some more scaling and positioning um, and then probably the first thing is going to be printing this mechanism before I actually print the cosmetics and then working out how the cosmetics fit around it but of course I've scaled everything out so that makes it much much easier. 
Hopefully that's given you some insight into the planning for this project. Of course, with most projects, I just make it up as I go along and think ahead a bit. But for this one, it's quite biologically inspired and there's quite a lot of flex points. So I really need to plan most of that stuff in CAD before building it. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects. Next time in this project, hopefully I'm actually going to be getting to print and build some of those shoulder mechanics. We can hopefully see how it's going to move in real life. Also check out the social media links in the description to this video, including my new Instagram accounts for some pictures and sneak peeks of other projects.